Things that you should be looking into if you want a mining job. Welcome to Australian Mining for New Starters. And in today's video, I just want to go through the research that you should be looking into and the questions that you should be asking yourself and when you're trying to get yourself a job in the mining industry. So first of all is where in the industry are you going to be getting the jobs? And the reason that I'm doing it this way is because I'm loading up all the videos that I've already done about these topics because the jobs really are all over Australia and you can have a look back through these job videos. But we'll just quickly come over to our map to have a look. So you've got work, as you can see, in the middle of New South Wales, up in northern Queensland in the middle of South Australia, Olympic Dam and all the prominent hill stuff. Down in Tasmania, there's lots of stuff opening up. Bucket loads in uh, Western Australia. The only place that there's not that much going on is in Victoria at the moment, but the Victorian gold industry is really trying to ramp itself up at the moment. So that's the first thing that you should be asking yourself. Where are you gonna go? Where are all the jobs? From our perspective, we like to point everybody towards either hard rock underground or exploration. They do need a lot of utility workers, but um, because of the, we're gonna talk about poaching rules in a minute, you can see it'll be a bit of a dead end job. So the next one we wanna have a look at is tickets and qualifications. A lot of people get hung up on this. This is a really formal one that I've done with all the act and regulations that explains it formula formally um, there's other ones that I've done you can see there's a lot of videos on this because people get confused the long and the short of it is that with hard rock mining especially hard rock underground mining all the owners of the mines each mine that they've got they have to issue their own on-site equipment tickets and on-site procedures and when you move from one site to another even if you move internally within the same company so the both the company owns both the mines when you move to the new mine you have to treat it like you're moving to a new country so they have to redo everything all over again it's a ginormous pain in the ass yes but it's made the industry so much safer over the time that i've been in it nobody's going to change it so it's important to understand that going and spending five to ten thousand dollars on a bunch of r2 tickets isn't going to help you get a mining production job in hard rock underground mining anywhere in the country or coal mining anywhere in the country bar barring queensland because the reason I say that is Queensland coal is the only area of the production mining industry that uses those R2 tickets and uses the S11. You don't have to have an S11 for anywhere else in the country. These training companies that call it a nationally recognised course, it's ridiculous. It's nationally recognised under the government's training system, but none of the employers recognise it. And you only have to go over to SEEK and type underground in, and you'll see that the only job ads that actually ask for the S11 are the ones that are in Queensland on coal mines. So next we are going to have a look at the poaching rules like I talked about before and I've done videos on this and you can have a look why people get trapped in the utility role. The reason is that they've changed the, they changed the poaching rules 20 years ago to say that if you move from one employer to another on site then you have to go off site for six months and I talk to people on a weekly basis about this. I just talked to a lady that um, she had to restart her whole career again. She was a utility on a big underground site she got offered a nippers job from one of the contractors nobody realized about the poaching rules the, the catering company that she was working for got really stroppy about it to the point where it was much easier just for her to quit and find another job and that's what happens guys so you need to be aware of these poaching rules and that's why anybody that tells you that getting a utility job is a stepping stone it's pr that's pretty misleading i mean it's very few people that make the jump from a utility job into a production mining job if you want a production mining job that's the place that you've got to start if you want to know how to do it then check out the um, sponsors intro to underground mining course the diy it's 495 dollars and it's got all the training in it that the employers want so you can do it so that's poaching rules. Next, we want to talk about whether you have to relocate. And I've done a few videos about that. And that's up to you. But since COVID, most of the employers want you in the state that the mine's in. And especially if you're dealing with Kalgoorlie or Mount Isa, it's all right to send your resume in a couple of weeks before you head there. But they're not going to really do anything until you're standing in front of them. Everybody really wants to, a commitment from that person to relocate to the area. So that means that you're going to have to be standing in front of you. Now, um, 
The other thing is that you need to look at is, is it going to be a full-time job, a part-time job? Uh, when I say part-time, I mean a fixed-term contract. A, a number of companies are doing that, so you're only signed up for a short amount of time. Um, that's how Gina was able to get rid of all her truck drivers at Arroy Hill because most of them were on a fixed-time contract until um, it went driverless. Uh, so whether you're that or whether you're labour hire. Um, Coal tends to use a lot of labour hire. It tends to use a lot of um, training um, schools so that go for 12 months that don't have full-time jobs afterwards. Um, you can have a look at what I've done about training schools. If you put training schools in there, you'll see all, all the videos and my opinions about that come up. But yeah, you know, the reason that we point everybody in the direction of Hard Rock Underground is because the majority of the employers, if not all of them, they want full-time staff. They want to nail down their staff because that's, you know, that they need bums on seats at the moment to make money. So they want to offer people good money, full-time jobs. And that's, you know, that's why we point people in that direction. So the last one is, and this is the last video that I did, are you ready to be thrown in the deep end because that's what's going to happen? And it's just mining. I mean, you know, you can jump in. If you jump in with rose-coloured glasses and you're relying on the company to teach you everything and go in, then you're probably setting yourself up for fail. And that's not a knock on the companies or anything like that or the people that are running the training at the moment or anything like that. That's just the reality of the situation and knowing what you're walking into. And I go into in this video about how whenever we're in a boom, it causes a lot of turnover in the top jobs and that creates problems with training underneath and everything else that goes with it it's a situation where it's not anybody's fault but if you know about it and you can um, educate yourself before you go then you can put yourself in a position where you're not going to be a statistic so they're, they're the big things that I think that you should look at there's lots of jobs all over the country you just have to type underground into seek you'll see how many jobs that there are up around the place you're looking for nipper truck offsider and even service crew jobs and you know bang them in do, do the training make the changes to your resume and bang them in and away you go you can um, also have a look at the videos on the resumes that they get me to do all you have to do is type resume in and you'll see all the videos that have come up on resumes and you can have a look through them at how easy it is to put one together for yourself for one of these hard rock underground mining jobs and so if you've got any more questions that you want answered, please send them through. If you could share this video around so people know what they should be looking at to get into the mining industry. And if you couldn't like and subscribe the channel. Thanks.